Ferris Bueller's day off in succession. He's a uh, proud graduate of Parma Senior High School, and uh, he's coming home for a show. An evening with Alan Ruck is at the Agora on Friday night. Uh, I will be your host for that show, and uh, it should be Damn. a lot of fun. Back to back. Yeah, we just confirmed. Nice. Congrats, man. That's um, cool. So it should be a lot of fun. So we will. Uh, we're, there's going to be a screening of Ferris Bueller's Day Off, be some what Q&A. What the hell is the matter with you? <laughs> <laughs> Pardon my French. Are you going to stick around for the movie, too? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah it would be a good time. Uh, so that's at the Agora. I don't know if there are tickets remaining, but you can go to agoracleveland.com uh, for the details on it. But we'll talk to Alan Ruck tomorrow afternoon on the show. And uh, what else? Trying to think of something later in the week that I wanted to tell you about. Mm, maybe I'll sit on that. Um, oh, so anyway, uh, Guardians baseball tonight on the buzzard. That is an 8-10 first pitch. They are in Houston. It is the first of three against the Astros before they come home uh, for a bit. Yeah, the Cavs game, we gave away those... Um, uh, we sent uh, Rob out to the Science Center earlier, and people swarmed him for those tickets, but I held a pair back. So in about an hour, if you can go to tonight's uh, Game 5 playoff game, I will have one last pair of tickets for you. It might be the Cavs' last uh, time playing in Cleveland. Is that not the not, the not the Cavs' last time? Like, the playoffs. Yeah, it might yeah, be yeah. the last game of the season, not that they're going to. Well, no, where we are yeah, where yeah. we are right now, might this might be the last playoff J.B. Bickerstaff's final Time coaching in Cleveland. Hmm. Who's his assistant? Would they just bump the next guy up? No, they'll they'll try and. Where was he? The Timberwolves. Where'd he come from? Bickerstaff wasn't uh, he? Was, who um... was he with? He was. Because we didn't just bump him up, right? They brought him no, in. I think for they somewhere. did actually. Oh, they did. Oh, hey. I can't remember. I I think it was Atlanta or something. I don't okay. Remember. Hey, Mike. Dad's a coach. Yes. What's up? Hey there. I got a story about getting high with your parents. With my parents, probably not. My no, friend. not your parents. Ah, <laughs> with mine. Yes. Ah, uh, so basically, uh, when I was 17 years old, I got back from a three-day Nelson Ledges trip, fell asleep with a bag of weed on my chest. My dad came in and busted me, sent me to rehab for six months. Fast forward to the age of 22, I was selling weed out of a backpack that I still live with my parents. I would come in the house, go up to my room, blast death metal for 35 seconds, get in a bag ready, come back down, and uh, be on my way. So uh, maybe about two weeks or so into this, Dad got hip, and he stopped me on the way out and asked me what's in the backpack. And I told him I, I'm selling weed, that I thought I was the end of my life at that point. I thought he was going to call the cops. And then he asked me for a quarter. And uh, ever since then, we've been smoking. This is about 20 years ago now. Um, but yeah, so it, it, uh, it, it wasn't fun at first when he sent me to rehab at the age of 17, but, uh, I asked him about the bag that he stole from me at the age of 17. And he said, Oh, that was really good stuff, man. And I, I knew, I knew he had smoked it. Um, but yeah, that was, that's my, that's my story. There's a lot to unpack here. That goes above and beyond a story about getting high with your parents, Michael. <laughs> You know, that's usually just mom and dad puff, puff, pass. You're talking about, like, you were selling, you went to rehab, your dad was uh, ganking your stash, the whole bit. Really runs the gamut. That's an emotional roller coaster, Michael. Yes. Yeah, yeah. At the age of 17, when he sent me to rehab, he took the bag that I had on my chest when I fell asleep. And, uh, yeah, I questioned him about that several, like, maybe 10 or 15 years later. And he had said that, yeah, that was some really good stuff. I was like, oh, I wish I would have known. He sent you to rehab for marijuana? That's correct. I, I didn't even think they. I didn't think they even received people for marijuana. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Okay. Uh, how how long was that program? Was um, about six months. Six. And it was outpatient. Months. I wasn't. Did it work? Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> no, it did not. Wow. This is a program that your father paid for. That is correct. Yeah. Well, that was money well spent. Um, yeah. Right. Okay. Thank you, Michael. You're welcome. Hate the show, man. Appreciate it. Smoke weed every day. Thank you. Well, how about that? That's wild. I tried to check myself into rehab uh, in my last year of college, and they said that because I drove myself there and all my vitals were normal that they couldn't admit me. They were like, you don't have a problem. And then I was like, well, 
rehab people said I don't have a problem. I drove home. You're like, I'm I cured. Told my parents, <laughs> yeah, I told my parents. Right. Because they knew I was going to rehab, and I told my parents that I was like, but they, they wouldn't let me in. And they're like, what do you mean? And I was like, they said that because I wasn't drunk and all my vitals were normal, and I drove myself there that I wasn't in as bad a shape and they couldn't give me a bed. And so, um, that yeah, that was that was a real for them to admit this guy for smoking weed. And they looked at me and I was like, hey, I have a serious drinking problem. I need help. And they're like, nah, you drove today. You're all right. <laughs> that's so strange. Yeah, that's very weird. That sounds to me like they were just making up a reason because they maybe didn't have the room. Or I mean, I mean, that's what they told me. They yeah. said that because I like like wasn't actively drunk and I hadn't drank in a couple days or it was like. T- two days or something like that, that I wasn't that bad. And I didn't have to go. It was somewhere in Youngstown. I don't even remember. Wow. I, like, packed a suitcase, took my car, ready to go for however long I was going to have to be there. Well, I read that the DEA is finally going to reclassify pot. They've been pushing this for a long, long time, and I I think it was probably inevitable given how um, widespread marijuana is becoming legal. Uh, But the the push has been to reclassify it because they're like, it's ridiculous that it should be classified with cocaine and heroin. And, you know, so uh, that's a pretty historic shift. The DEA is going to move to reclassify marijuana as a less dangerous drug. It's just insane that it is it lasted that long. This long. It's, it's so insane. It's currently a Schedule One drug. So it's like alongside heroin and LSD. And it'll move pot to Schedule Three, which would be alongside ketamine and anabolic steroids. So quite the demotion in the reefer madness category. Now, how will that affect people like nationwide? Where will people that have felony drug convictions get? Well, I don't. I don't know what Biden called for this a couple of years ago. He's like, we need a review of federal marijuana law. Because he was going to pardon, like, thousands of people. Bro, you're the president. Just say it's who were, now. Who were convicted for possession, right? So he, he, he this big uh, push a couple of years ago where he was calling on governors and all these people. He's like, you know, do what you can do to ease all these marijuana convictions because this push to have it reclassified might not be happening now as of when he was talking in 2022, but it's going to happen. And, you know, P, the, all of these unnecessary criminal records that people have just for possession or use it creates all kinds of problems for people moving forward it it causes problems in employment and housing and and educational opportunities and things like that so uh, the DEA finally it has to go I think over one final hurdle but that's just the uh, the OMB office there at the White House has to kind of look it over but if the DEA's proposal is this is what we should do then uh, that's what they're going to do. So it, it's really, the, it's the biggest change in DEA policy in half a century. And a lot of people have been pushing for it. Now, there's a lot of people who think it should be dropped from the controlled substances list completely. Yeah. And regulated like alcohol, which is kind of where I fall. Yeah, mm-hmm. honestly. I mean, it is, a, it is a, a controlled substance, but technically so is alcohol. You know, it's, it just depends on how these things are legally classified. And then there's people that say that they shouldn't change anything. That they're like, well, rescheduling it, it, it leads to problems. How is rescheduling it going to lead to problems? I mean, it's, no, again, we, it's incredible. A lot of our prisons are for profit, so we got to make sure we can keep them full. And well, that really helps. Yeah. <laughs> They'll find other ways to keep those prisons full, I'm sure. So, um, yeah. Cool the, stuff. <laughs> Federal drug policy has really kind of lagged behind. You know, politics is downstream from culture, they always say, and, and th- that federal policy has really lagged behind because 38 states have medical marijuana legal and 24 states have it legal recreationally. So that's a that's a big, big move over there. I got This Week in Jesus for you, too. This Week in Jesus. Well, thank God, Russell Brand is getting baptized. I mean, who couldn't wait to... Religion is the last refuge of the scoundrel, after all, and Russell Brand, of course, he's neck deep in all of these uh, sexual assault allegations, and so what do you do? Become born again. 
And uh, that's what he's doing. He's giving himself a fresh start by getting baptized. A little water on the head, and you're good to go. Bad timing, though, boy. I mean, I know he's a guy in recovery, too, but, you know, if they're going to change, they're going to reschedule marijuana. Um, He has, uh, of course, Russell Brand, if you know anything about him. His stories are legendary, right? I mean, he was a, a big substance abuser. Very, very promiscuous. That'll eventually get you into trouble if you're famous because you know, all it takes is a couple of people to be like, eh, yeah, I got down with him, but it wasn't hinky. And, and you know, so he's dealing with that now. But uh, he has been reborn in Christ's name. And uh, now, <laughs> yes. Well, I mean, I grew up Pentecostal, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if baptism means different things things in different religions but from what i remember we were taught that baptism meant you were just like showing the world you believed in god it didn't mean anything really more than that like you yes you washed away your sins but it was more of like a public proclamation that like hey i believe in god it wasn't like a and i was a kid but the way i remembered it it was like not a huge deal. Like, getting saved and being baptized are two different things. Well, the baptism, though, is kind of symbolic of the born again, right? I mean, as a Catholic, it's a sacrament. Uh, but in, in just the general Christian faith, it is part of kind of that um, being born again part. Because as a Catholic, I was baptized as a baby. I had no say in it, right? It's like the first thing, your christening, your baptism, the whole thing. They put you in a little girly gown, and, you know, they hold you over the baptismal Yeah, why font. do they make the babies so gay? Like, when they're getting the, like, why do they put you in that girly, they don't, well, they, because they, have, for, like, they because don't have, like, a sailor suit or something? They babies the don't care. In? I mean, yeah, baby. Right, but I mean, like, if, I, I'm not Catholic, but if I was getting my baby boy baptized, I don't know if I'd want to wear that many ruffles. Like, I looked I, good in it. I saw my photos. Yeah. I looked good. Big fat face, and it was like, "Oh, that's a beautiful <laughs> little baby girl." That's right. I I was I was a beautiful little baby girl when I got baptized. Everybody said so. Well, like yeah, it's, it's like a, that snow camo, like you know, make him look like a badass. So they disappear <laughs> into yeah. the baptismal font. Yeah, just I mean, it's got to be all white, right? So you got to do you got to do something to make it more masculine. Well, it's a symbol of purity. It's so weird to put it the baby washing away such, your original sin, and then get so like. And that's the problem. Like, I have no problem with it if they were cool with gay people in general, but they're not. But they'll do, they'll dress a little baby up in androgynous clothing and then be like, but don't do that when you're older. Well, and all the clergy members, yeah, I mean, they're all wearing they're dresses. dresses <laughs> I mean, gay, the gay vestments hats. and you know, whatever. <laughs> I mean, it's all, you know, it's pomp and it's circumstance and it's everything. But to your thing, Mary, I, I think when people do it when they're older, you're right. That is their public proclamation that this is what I choose. But, I but was, babies don't get to choose, so there's no, a lot of people that are like. I'm saying like under the Russell Brand thing that, that and I, I could be misremembering it, but I was always taught that Mr. being it. saved and getting baptized are different. So just getting baptized doesn't mean that you are a born-again Christian. Correct, but I think that if you are born again, you probably go through the, I would think that you would probably do the baptism. Because yeah, well, no, no, for sure. I didn't know if he was, like, because I know he's he's been all over the place the last few years with religion and, like, yeah. exploring a ton of them. So I didn't know if, like, this was his way of saying I landed on Western Christianity. That's what it seems like. Or if he was just, like, I got I'm baptized this week. And next, yeah, and next <laughs> week I'm going to a monastery because I'm, I'm going to try that out. He said he's leaving the past behind and he has been reborn in Christ. Okay. So go. he's uh, doing the baptism and the whole thing. And, um, you know, is he, and he's like, and since I left the past behind, how about you guys also leave the past behind? Right. That's basically what he's Didn't you to guys say I've been baptized? <laughs> yeah. I, uh, Everybody in the Mormon church. About get him to the Greek. What's that? Nothing. I'm being mean. Go ahead. Uh, in the Mormon church, there's ordinances and covenants that you have to do in order to make it to the highest kingdom of God and baptism's one of those. So it's pretty important in the Mormon church and it is uh washing away the sins and saying that you you love Jesus and all that. Are they like stuff. checkpoints in a video game? 
Pretty much, yeah. If when you die, you got to beat the rebel. big boss. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, as a Catholic, you know, you're and baptized. And then you find out the big boss was just your own your sin. Kids. That's <laughs> right. It was Bowser the whole time. Uh, no, because as a Catholic, you know, like you're baptized as a baby, and then you go through First Communion uh, when you are, like, in the third or fourth grade, I think. And then there's confirmation when you're in high school. And I remember know. all my friends getting confirmed, and yeah. they got their confirmation name. And yep. My, well, what's your confirmation name, Alan? It's like your middle name. Your what? Don't you put it in the well, What's your confirmation you, name, Alan? You choose a saint's <laughs> name, right? But they tell you, Which they tell you, well, every name has a saint attached. I took Ian because it's Gaelic for John, mm. and I'm Irish. And so um, you get to pick it? You get to choose your ca- your confirmation. We did yes. something like that. Oh, we got a uh, patriarchal blessing is what it was called, and they gave me a name, and I don't remember what it was because they say, like, you're – it's basically like <laughs> they say, you know, God told me to call you this, and uh, – Oh, so it, it was like – It was like um, Caleb or some crap It was divinely like inspired. Yeah. yeah. I but see. I can't remember. I don't – but – they, that's basically kind of like when they open up the God tells you where part of the world to do your mission. Right. Well, the patriarchal blessing is like uh, Mormon astrology, where they're like, we're gonna tell you how your life's gonna go, and then you like have they like type it out and they give it to you and like just read over this whenever you're feeling like insecure about your beliefs or blah blah blah. And one of the things that mine did say is that going on a mission would point me in the direction of the career I wanted to have. And boy, did it. it. sure did, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not in the way that they meant. Yeah, and they go, and they were like, not like that. <laughs> so we had a thing, not not a naming thing, but kind of what you're talking about, where it was when you get your calling. Mm-hmm. Like everyone, it's kind of like um, just like a moment of clarity where you are either praying or speaking in tongues or whatever it is where you feel that God tells you what your calling in life was. And I always said that mine, um, I remember the day at church camp that I said I got my calling. And it was to talk to people. And I was told that. And I was like, I know I'm meant to talk to people. I don't really know what that means. And they're like, you're meant to be a pastor. Like, we're going to get you a fast track. Go home, write a sermon. It it could be about anything. And I spent, like, an entire summer, like, writing sermons and going through and finding. Do you have any of those sermons? Dude, I'm sure. They honestly... Do you know what I think is going to happen? I think my mom probably kept all those old diaries and stuff. And they're oh, gonna and be they're the in your storage unit. unit. Nice. I really, I would not be surprised if that was real. Um, but then when I found stand-up and I started doing stand-up, I'm like, maybe this is what I meant, that I'm meant to talk to people, that it's not necessarily to be a pastor, but to, like, make people laugh. That's how Sam that's Kinison it did it. <laughs> that's how Sam Kinison did it. Yeah. I'm Sam gonna... Kinison screamed at people. He was a pastor. He had that whole cadence. He was a he was an evangelical preacher. Are that you was, for real? Yeah, that yeah. was the family oh, business. He was yeah. a tent revivalist. That's how he ended up with like that that kind of uh, preacher kind of cadence. Yeah. He didn't have a preacher cadence. He screamed. Well, he modified it. Yeah, my son, da di di di, I see koshantaya, lo 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 si. Yeah, my son, da di di di, I see koshantaya. Mhm. Koshantaya. Told brother Ed that I got. Brother Ed, not even Edward. Nope, brother Ed. I'm cool. You can call me Ed. He's like an old man. He got a long face, gray hair. I can picture his. I can picture his face of us having this conversation at church camp in Bellevue, Ohio, Hidden Hollow campgrounds. I think it's Bellevue, Ohio. Wow. Yeah. Also, a Catholic group had to um, had to deactivate their AI priest after it went off the rails real fast. AI is one of these things now that everybody thinks they have Bring to... Bring me your children. Right. AI is one of these things that everybody thinks they have to be a part of, except it's far from perfect, and it's just using all of our dumb information. It's using the internet. Mm-hmm. So, why, you know, they had this AI chatbot priest that they called Father Justin, and it came with an avatar and, you know, trying to be a, a cool priest, but it started to tell people that it was an actual priest. And so the problem was a lot of people thought they were talking to an actual priest, but the exchanges uh, got strange. Uh, He was telling people that masturbation is a grave moral sin and a disorder. Sounds like a priest to me. Yeah. Yeah. They normally say that, don't they? I mean, ours didn't. If you confessed it in confession, they would tell you, go, hey, go easy on the taffy pulling, will you? That's what Uh, they'd say. (laughs) The priest also told one user that it was okay to baptize a baby in Gatorade. 
Now, show me where it says it's not okay. It's got what plants and babies need. (laughs) That's right. I mean, we did ours in the pool at church camp, so it's not like... Like a, like a pool. Like that's a public water, pool yeah. that you go to. Mm-hmm. So I'm saying, I mean, Gatorade's made of water. What's the difference? Mine had chlorine in it. Well, what they did is they defrocked their AI avatar. So rather than putting them in the vestments and the Roman collar, now he just has like a jacket and an open collar shirt. And he's it's like, cool hey, yeah, just telling people, no, I'm just a chat bot. I've never been uh, an actual priest. but uh, Or alive. Or alive, yeah. I've got to take a break. I will have more money for you coming up at 4.30. Be listening for that next keyword. You get yourself $1,000 courtesy of the buzzer bookie.